I was shot point blank in my own home with my sister and her newly wedded husband with the news considerate breaking. Because somehow breaking is written in capital letters about trivial things like banning yoga pants and little league, little league players being stripped of their titles, but the death of these three angels was only given one tweet. Seven hours after the incident, and no breaking headline. Because breaking means only the breaking of hearts belonging to those who, when their skin still covered their skeleton, were considered fully American. On Thursday, they had their funeral. Yusuf, age 21. Liyat, age 23. Razan, age 19. Razan and Yusuf were sisters. Dia was Yusuf's husband, and they had gotten married just six weeks earlier. On Thursday, they had their funeral, and on Thursday at their funeral, their father said, I am wearing the same suit I wore to her wedding. One week later, they say they're still looking to see if hate had any motivation in this, if religion had any motivation in this, if it was a hate crime, if religion had anything to do with it. And I ask, what sentiment other than hate is needed in lining up three innocent students and shooting them one by one in the head? You wanted moderate? We gave you moderates. If you want me to appeal to your orientalist political agenda and use rhetoric, then I will, and I will tell you that these individuals were moderates. But nothing was affected when they passed into oblivion, seeking justice only with their Lord. And it's scary, it is so scary to think that discrimination not only permeates one's life, but persists after one's death. Don't you dare claim Islamophobia isn't a threat. Isn't this proof enough? Suddenly, a parking dispute is a good enough excuse for executing one, two, three. You see, I'm not mourning for the loss of their lives because, yes, they were lights here on earth, but right now, their souls in heaven lie. I mourn for the fact that we're always left to mourn alone. I mourn for the way Yusuf and Razan's mother and father had to plead with officers for hours for an answer. Media wouldn't report it because they kept saying nothing was verified. They had to check. I'm sorry, Fox News, but when did you ever try to be politically correct? It had nothing to do with religion or race, said Hicks' wife. Because God forbid a white man proved to be the aggressor. I mean, there isn't really any pressure to hate the Muslims anyways. Sure, we call terrorist groups Islamists, and sure, we couple scarves and beards with explosives, but that's not even a good enough motive. He was a good, white, atheist man. A good, white, atheist, liberal, gun-toting man. Where are the headlines about how Yusuf, Razan, and Liyad were good Arab Muslim Americans? It's like there are zones for human value. Somehow bones can be different and that should affect our view. This hit home. My sister could have been Yusuf. My brother-in-law could have been Liyad. I could have been Razan. My baba and mama could have been the parents who lost two daughters and one son-in-law in one day and had to wait hours for an answer from the police. Not given the consolation of a condemnation, it was a white man, there's nothing to blame. It had nothing to do with religion. Your daughters just could have solved their parking problems. You know how Arabs tend to be. And the tragedy is in the fact that the outcry is barely audible. Sometimes murder is justifiable, the articles whisper behind the prone to anger man who turned himself in. Where are the apologies? This morning felt different. As I wrapped my scarf around my head, there was some unavoidable feeling that I was stamping myself a target instead. Now don't twist what I said. I will never compromise my beliefs, but is it wrong for me to admit I don't feel fully secure here? That in the only country I ever considered home, my breath costs a bit less than the breath of some other piece of flesh? It's unsettling to be reminded that my life and the lives of those I love are not weighed and it's terrifying to be reminded of death itself. On Tuesday night we cried. On Wednesday night we cried. On Thursday night we cried. On Friday night we cried, and tonight we still cry. But this time the tears are different. This time we find the lights that lit their souls and let that guide us. I feel motivated now. I feel the blessing of life now. I feel the responsibility of bearing my identity with nothing but resilience and no enmity, just peace and charity. For Yusuf, for Liyah, for Razan, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajaun.